Good morning, my name is David Schwartzberg. I would like to thank the Society for allowing me to present. I'm sorry I cannot be there. The title of this talk is What Goes Up Must Come Down. I am an assistant professor of surgery uh, at Northwell Health. I have no disclosures. You may know Northwell Health because it is a series of hospitals uh, throughout New York or because we have a choir that has been on America's Got Talent. I am certainly not about to open any kind of foreign body center of excellence. However, I'm up to date on the literature as I recently was able to write uh, a textbook chapter with two of my colleagues on foreign bodies and uh, interrectal trauma. The incidence is low. It's up to once a month. The male to female ratio is two to one. There's two types, it's sexual behavior, which can be a variety of irregularly shaped objects that are per rectum, or it's blunt penetrating trauma, sepal injuries, uh, and other motor vehicle accidents can lead to fractures of the bony pelvis, which end up leading to lacerations uh, of the rectum and the sphincter complexes. And then there's gunshot wounds and stab wounds, and that has direct damage to the anal rectum, and about 80% of anorectal trauma is associated with those. The algorithm uh, is have a chaperone present, start with the least invasive and progress as needed, and confirm it's in the rectum. There is uh, a patient here that had a foreign body, and if you look closely, it wasn't actually in the rectum despite the emergency room staff trying to retrieve it. Turns out it was in the vagina. Uh, always suspect there's intra-abdominal injury, always have a chaperone, always consider people may not entirely be forthcoming, especially with foreign bodies, obtain a thorough h &P and always supplement with radiological imaging. Even the most benign cases could end up uh, with pneumoperitoneum. Physical exam, is there peritonitis? If there's not, we'll continue you know, with the ER-based uh, protocols. However, if there's peritonitis, the patient may need a CT or they may need to go straight to the operating room if they're unstable. Uh, inspect the peritoneum, hematoma, cellulitis, inspect adjacent organs. Um, on your digital rectal exam, document and take note of rest tone, squeeze tone, using anoscopy or rigid proctoscopy. Is there blood in the rectal vault? Is there mucosal damage? A lot of these injuries are going to be extra peritoneal, and you might actually be able to perform an ER-based exam uh, and retrieval. Labs, leukocytosis will certainly guide you in a direction uh, if the patient's becoming septic. Pregnancy tests, uh, coagulopathy, COVID tests, all these things need to be ordered because you could wind up in the operating room. Supplement with imaging, pneumoperitoneum, a KUB is going to tell you the placement and the shape of the foreign body. That might guide your rational decision-making about what can be done where in the hospital. And remember, if it's a trauma situation, up to 64% could have an associated genitourinary injury. So a triple phase contrast CT might be needed. Again, confirm it's in the rectum. Start small. In the ER, pain meds, lubrication. See if there's no mucosal injury, if you can manually retrieve it. Try constant sedation if needed. Epidurals have been shown to be helpful. However, once you start sedating these patients, they then can't give consent for further procedures. So it's upfront a good idea to discuss the series of operations or procedures that might be necessary and to get consent for those upfront. Uh, again, attempt retrieval in the ER if at all possible, use anoscopy to visualize the, uh, the object, grasp it, slide a lubricated Foley distal to the object, that's very helpful. It stops the suction that's created by the rectum collapsing on the object just proximal to it. However, you can also put a Foley in and inflate it and try to help use that to guide the object out of the uh, proximal rectum and to be able to be retrieved. But again, typically the Foley trick is with just stopping the suction so you can then grasp the object. Anything more, you're probably going to need to be in the operating room for sedation or general anesthesia. If there's major injury or if there's minor injury to the sphincter, you still need to be in the operating room to breed, do a primary sphincter repair. It's typically a braided suture on a UR6 needle. 2O is typically what's used. Give antibiotics, possibly give tetanus prophylaxis. This is assuming there's no intra-abdominal pathology. Now, if there's major injury to the sphincter or the peritoneum, you have to assume there might be an intraperitoneal pathology. So if the patient needs a CT to confirm that, that's one thing. But if you don't have time or you're not, uh, the scanner is not available or the patient's unstable, 
a laparoscopy or laparotomy needs to be on the consent because you may need to do those things to uh, identify any injury. They may actually need a sigmoid colostomy. They may need delayed sphincter repair. But once the patient's stabilized, they can always be transferred to a specialist who has a high volume of overlapping sphincteroplasties, which are not that common anymore. Antibiotics and tetanus. For foreign bodies, if there's no pneumoperitoneum, but it's high in the rectum, the ER temp has failed. You can try sedation and a perianal nerve block. You can use an operating proctoscope. You can use endoscopic graspers or snares. Depending on the object, it might work, even if the object is large. If there's a way to uh, grasp it, you could retrieve it per rectum. You can try an endo catch bag. And this has been done deploying the bag and then squeezing it between the pointer and forefinger, inserting it in the rectum, allowing it to expand, seeing if the foreign body can drop into the endo catch bag and then removing it. Or you may need to go to laparoscopy or laparotomy, depending on the sur surgeon's uh, comfort with the platforms, try to avoid a colotomy or a proctotomy. Try to just use laparoscopy or laparotomy to manipulate the object into the rectum so you can use the above techniques. Some people have also stated they have tried a transanal platform uh, and that depends kind of on, on the uh, object and it's not only location, but what it's made out of. Um, Foreign bodies, there is pneumoperitoneum in this situation. Maybe there's intraperitoneal contamination. Still try to facilitate removal through the rectum uh, so it can be removed transanally. You may need a laparotomy, you may need a colostomy. Remove the object, perform a washout, and then assess. If there's limited contamination, a primary repair or resection and anastomosis is probably possible. Drain widely, give antibiotics and tetanus. If there is contamination or there's a rectal injury, the patient might need diversion. You may have to debride and perform a primary repair and divert proximal, or they still may need uh, a sigmoid colostomy, especially if there is a rectal injury that's not able to be uh, accessed intraperitoneally. Uh, drain widely, antibiotics, tetanus, extraperitoneal rectal injury, stable and minimal contamination, try a primary transanal repair after a rectal washout, antibiotics, tetanus. If there's gross contamination associated with an extraperitoneal rectal injury, you're gonna to have to debride what you can, allow for secondary uh, intention, uh, delayed repair, or delayed repair. Uh, debride what you, you can, give parental antibiotics. And this is a patient, extraperitoneal rectal injury with gross contamination is going to need a loop uh, sigmoid colostomy. If there's a rectal injury and there is associated intraperitoneal pathology, but the patient's stable and there's minimal contamination, you may be able to resect and perform a primary anastomosis. Um, if there's gross contamination, uh, the patient may need fecal diversion in addition to the rectal washout and delayed repair. Distal irrigation through the diverting colostomy is not advised, although it does seem to make sense. What the studies have shown is if you perform a, a loop sigmoid colostomy and then uh, irrigate distally and actually just increases the rate of pelvic sepsis. And also presacral drainage is not typically performed. Uh, it's not routine. It does have a place to uh, go through the anococcygeal ligament and drain that presacral space. But typically uh, intra-abdominal drainage and a rectal washout along with the colostomy is the preferred uh, method of treatment. Again, conclusion, thorough HMP, confirm the foreign bodies in the rectum, go through your trauma protocol if needed, inspect the adjacent organs, inspect the anorectal mucosa. Even if you can retrieve the object in the ER, do a proctoscopy or at least an anoscopy to see if there's any mucosal injury, rule out per pneumoperitoneum, find associated injuries, start with the least invasive techniques possible, use laparoscopy only to facilitate transanal extraction unless you need to make a colotomy or a proctotomy. Limit contamination, drain, divert, give antibiotics, give tetanus, be comfortable with delayed repairs and uh, limiting contamination before the patient has a uh, definitive procedure and transfer for sphincterplasty for severe injury. Thank you, it's been an honor, have a good day.